and welcome back. Let's have a look at the life of Eumenes now. I love the way that this camera just kind of slowly sags. <laughs> Let's see, from the life of Eumenes, which was written by Plutarch, I believe, we have, let's see. So uh, let's not start there. Let's go back to the very beginning. All right, I'm just sorry about that slow start here. I'm reading from Plutarch's uh, book and I'm trying to find the right place to start here. Um, so the interesting thing here about Eumenes is he's a very wily guy and I'm, I'm reading this text here and trying to uh, sort of synthesize it for you but basically Eumenes was working with Neoptolemus and uh, he had uh, uh, was very vain and uh, ambitious and Eumenes however was working with him trying to soothe him and also uh, soothe the Macedonian phalanxes that were becoming extremely insolent and audacious, according to Plutarch. Uh, but uh, what he did was apply, uh, what Eumenes did was apply himself to raising a body of cavalry uh, to counter them. And using them, uh, he remitted taxes on their behalf and gave them immunities uh, and recruited a large number of uh, horsemen. And let's see, and he trained them to be a great, uh, great horsemen, and they exercised extensively. The Macedonians upon this were variously affected, some with astonishment and others with joy to see a body of cavalry collected, uh, which would help them in their battles, to the number of 6,300 and trained in so short a space of time. Uh, about that time, Crateras and Antipater, having reduced Greece in that Lamian War that we mentioned in the last video, passed into Asia to overthrow the power of Perdiccas. And news was brought that, and this is where the, the politics gets a little iffy, because in the, the prior video we talked about, we talked about uh, Crateras and Antipater coming not to overthrow, but really to uh, sort of throwing their hand in with uh, with the, one of the one of the others, uh, so the news was brought that their first intention was to enter Cappadocia. Perdiccas himself was engaged in war with Ptolemy. He therefore appointed Eumenes commander in chief of the forces in Arme in Armenia and wrote uh, that uh, these two other leaders should obey the orders of that general, whom he had invested with discretionary powers. And one of those generals, Elsatus, who was supposed to report to Eumenius, plain refused, plainly refused to submit to that injunction, alleging that Macedonians would be ashamed to, f to fight Antipata. And as, <clears throat> and as for Craterus, their affection for him was such that they would receive him with open arms. This is probably where the special rule comes into play for the scenario that we mentioned in the last video at the end. On the other hand, it was visible that uh, Neptolemus, Neptolemus, was forming some treacherous scheme against Eumenes, but when he called upon, he refused to join him. When called upon, he refused to join him and instead prepared to give him battle. This was the first occasion on which Eumenes reaped the fruits of his foresight and timely preparations. For though his infantry were beaten, with his cavalry he put uh, Neptolemus to flight and took his baggage. And while the phalanx were dispersed upon the pursuit, he fell upon them in such good order with his horse that they were forced to lay down their arms and take an oath to serve him. Uh, Neptolemus uh, buggered off with a few guys and retired uh, with them to Craterus and Antipater. They had, they had uh, already sent ambassadors to Eumenes to sigh him to adopt their interests, in reward of which they would confirm to him the satrapies he had and give him others, with an additional number of troops, in which case he would find Antipater a friend instead of an enemy and continue his friendship with Craterus instead of turning his arms against him. So apparently they were quite close at some point. Eumenes made an answer to this proposal, saying that having long been on a footing of enmity with Antipater, he did not choose to be his friend at a time when he saw him treating his friends as so many enemies. As for Craterus, he was all ready to reconcile with him to Perdiccas and to settle matters between them just and on just and reasonable terms. But if he should begin hostilities, he should support his injured friend while he had an hour to live and rather sacrifice life itself than his honor. Rather crafty there, trying to split the two leaders uh, against each other. So uh, trying to split Antipada and Craterus. While this answer was reported to Antipada and Craterus, they took some time to deliberate upon the measures they should pursue. 
And meanwhile, Neptolemus, arriving, gave them an account of the battle he had lost and requested assistance from them both, but particularly of Pateras. He said, the Macedonians had so extraordinary an attachment to him that if they saw but his hat, he heard one accent or heard one accent of the tongue, they would immediately run to him with their swords in their hands, quote, end quote. Uh, indeed, the reputation of Craterus was great among them, and after the death of Alexander, most of them wished to be under his command. And they remembered the risks he had run of embroiling himself with Alexander for their sakes. And it goes on and on about that a little bit and uh, how, how nice he was to them. So uh, you can see that there's a fair amount of politics going on here and uh, building between these two, uh, two folks. And then there's a description of the battle. Uh, <clears throat> I'm wondering how much of that to read. Let's see. Craterus was uh, now sent Antipater into Cilicia and taking up a considerable part of the forces himself, marched along with Neo, uh, Neptolemus against Eumenes. He thought that this attack would take Eumenes by surprise and that after the recent victory, he would find his army disorganized but, uh, and in you know, uh, drunken celebrations. But uh, Eumenes foresaw his coming and was prepared for it. We may impute uh, it is the vigilance necessary in any general, and we see nothing in that. Uh, we see nothing in that of superior genius. That doesn't really make much sense, does it? But when, uh, besides the conceding from the enemy what they ought to discover, he brought his own troops to action without knowing who was the adversary, their adversary, and made them serve against Craterus without finding out that he was the officer they had to contend with. In this way, we see characteristic uh, proofs of generalship. Mm. Uh, for he uh, pro propagated a report that Neptolemus, assisted by Pygris, was advancing again with some, uh, some forces and horse. Uh, that night he designed to decamp and he fell, uh, that night he designed to decamp, he fell into a sound sleep and had a very extraordinary dream. He thought he saw two Alexanders preparing to try their strength again against each other, and each at the head of a phalanx. Athena came to support the one and Demeter the other. A sharp conflict ensued in which the Alexander, assisted by Athena, was defeated, and Demeter crowned the victory with a wreath, a wreath of corn. He immediately concluded that the dream was in his favor, uh, because he had to fight for a country which was most of it in tillage. And which had been so excellent, had then uh, had such an excellent crop, well advanced towards the sickle, that the whole face of it had the appearance of a profound peace. Hmm. He was uh, he was the more confirmed in his opinion when he found the enemy's word was Athena's and Al the, the enemy's word was Athena and Alexander. And in opposition to it, he gave Demeter and Alexander. At the same time, he ordered his men to crown themselves and cover their arms with ears of corn. He, uh, he was several times upon the point of declaring to his principal officers and captains what adversary they had to contend with, thinking it a hazardous undertaking to keep to himself a secret so important and perhaps necessary for them to know. Yet he abode by his first resolution and trusted his own heart with only the danger that might ensue. Well, when he came to give, when he came to give battle, he would not set any Macedonian to engage Craterus, and this is where we talked earlier on in the other video where he sent Phanabazus uh, to fight uh, them himself, and uh, sent cavalry against him. Let's see. Eumenes himself, with a troop of three hundred select horse, went and posted himself on the right wing, where he should have to act against Nepl Neplatemus. Yeah, Neplatemus. I lost my place. <clears throat> when they had passed a little hill that separated the two armies and came into view, they charged with such impetu impetuosity that Craterus was extremely surprised and expressed his resentment in strong terms against Nept Neptolemus, who, he thought, had deceived him with the pretense that, Ma that Macedonians would change sides. However, he exhorted his officers to behave like brave men and stood forward of the encounter, and with the first shock, which was very violent, the spears were soon broken and they were then decided with uh, the dispute with sword. The behavior of Craterus did no want dishonor to Alexander. He killed numbers of his own with his own hand and overthrew many others who assailed him in front. But at last he received a side blow from a Thracian who brought him to the ground. Many passed over him without knowing uh, that it was him, but Gorgias, one of the Eumenes officers, took notice of him and being well acquainted with his person, leaped from his horse and guarded the body. 
It was then, however, too late. He was at the last extremity and in the agonies of death. In the meantime, Nepotimus engaged Eumenes. Uh, there was a lot of uh, animosity between the two. They had at it, and I believe that uh, he took an ass kicking, basically. They laid hold of each other, each endeavoring to tear off the helmet or the breastplate of his enemy. While their hands were thus engaged, their horses went under from them, and as they fell to the ground without quitting their hold, they wrestled for the advantage. Uh, Eumenes wounded him in the ham, and by that uh, means got upon his feet before him. Nephthatimus, being wounded on one knee, supported himself with the other and fought with great courage underneath, but was not able to reach his adversary, uh, his adversary a mortal blow. At last, receiving a wound in the neck, he grew faint, stretched out upon the ground. Eumenes, with all the eagerness of, an in, of inve, inveterate hatred, hastened to strip him of his arms and loading him, with his, loading him with his reproaches, did not observe that his sword was still in his hand, so that Nephthatimus wounded him under the curates where it touches upon the groin. However, as the stroke was but feeble, the apprehensions it gave him were, were greater than the real hurt. Well, that's a little detail for you. Uh, stabbed in the groin, but no big deal. Uh, let's see. So he despoiled the adversary, weak as he was with the wound he had received in his legs and arms. He mounted his horse and made up to the left wing, uh, where being informed of the fate of Quateris, he hastened to him and finding his last, finding his breath and senses not quite gone, he alighted from the horse, wept over him and gave him his hand. How, how cute. Uh, one while he vented his execrations upon Neptolemus, and another while he lamented his own ill fortune and the cruel necessity he was under of coming to extremities with the most intimate of friends and either giving or receiving the, and either giving or receiving the fatal blow. Anyway, uh, so he won this battle uh, uh, let's, just 10 days after the first battle. Uh, Ray rose him up in the rankings, and if you know much about what went on from there, uh, he uh, got into all sorts of strife with everybody else, basically. And um, Yeah, and then uh, I think it, what ends up happening is that Antigonus and, and Antipater were taken uh, uh, took upon themselves to so both opposite sides took it upon themselves to uh, 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 declare yes they decreed Eumenes death let's see what else happened here meantime Eumenes went to the royal horses which were pasturing upon Mount Ida and took such as he had occasion for, but gave the keepers a discharge for them. When Antipater was appraised of it, he laughed and said he could not enough admire the caution of Eumenes, who must certainly expect to see an account of the king's possessions rendered either one side or the other. And it goes on into uh, Eumenes went off and uh, uh, hid out in a castle for a while, was sieged, talked the guys out of sieging him, all sorts of fun things happened from there. He has uh, quite a long and rich life and uh, plays both sides against the middle uh, for an extended period of time. But anyway, that gives you a little bit of background on those guys and the battle uh, from the leadership perspective at least. And uh, later on, we'll talk about this specific battle and uh, I'll, I'll share some more with you. Uh, great Battles of History, uh, the uh, Great Battles of Alexander, Hellespont 321 BC. Ciao.